uh, computer tomography is now well established imaging technique for assessing morphologic changes in the airways. CT has become the primary tool for radiologists to investigate bronchiectasis. And as you know, I would like to also to remind you that the key CT findings for the diagnosis of bronchiectasis include the internal diameter of an airways larger than, the, than that of the adjacent pulmonary artery, the lack of distal tapering of the airway lumen, and of course the abnormal visibility of airways in the 15 millimeter of the periphery of the lung or abnormal visibility of airways lumen abutting the medicinal pleura. And also, uh, bronchial wall thickening and the mucus plugging dilate bronchi, uh, particularly in active disease, often accompany these uh, changes. And uh, the grading of severity of bronchiectasis uh, on CT uh, may be based on the degree of dilatation of their ways from cylindrical to varicose and to cystic bronchiectasis. But now, what is the best imaging procedure to assess the bronchiectasis and as often associated small airway disease. We know now that volumetric thin section MDCT is the imaging technique of reference for, to characterize bronchiectasis and also to assess the extent of both bronchiectasis and associated small airway disease. A thin collimation acquisition over the entire lung during a single breast hold allows us to provide H overlapped high resolution images. According to this acquisition and reconstruction parameters, we can obtain small voxels having cubic or almost cubic dimensions, and this isotropic data may provide multiple hour formations of high resolution in all directions. And these can be obtained with a reasonable, reasonable and acceptable radiation dose. Actually, several investigators have demonstrated that multiple hour formations increase the detection rate of bronchiectasis, the reader's confidence as to the distribution of bronchiectasis, and improve agreement between observers as to the diagnosis of bronchiectasis. That's why when we obtain the overlapped thin slices, axial uh, thin slices, we have to obtain rapidly, automatically, coronal and sagittal thin sections as well and visualize these images. But in addition, on purpose, the radiologist at the workstation may use the swivel mode that permits to move through the volume using the mouse like the ultrasonographer used the probe. Through the volume, is, we are able to find the selected plane and the image of this plane displays the origin of the airways involved and the distal divisions. And on this thin plane, we can thicken a little bit interactively the thick the thickness of the image, and you apply minimal intensity projection that blur the vessels, that blurs the vessels, and we increase the number of airways included in this image. This helps to evaluate which generations of the airways are involved in the process. This, uh, another example here, the same patient, this is right middle lobe, this is a lingular example. This technique also helps to identify the segments of the lobes involved by bronchiectasis. So in this example, we have varicose bronchiectasis in a atelectatic segment or lobe. What is this? Right middle lobe or right upper lobe? If you swivel in mean, minimum intensity projection, there is no doubt this is a, a right main uh, lobar bronchus, right upper lobar bronchus, anterior segment, and this varicose bronchiectasis involving the subsegmental bronchi in the anterior segment of the right upper lobe. And the second example, we have bilateral bronchiectasis in the upper lobes, we have swivel, 
minimum intensity projection, we have varicose bronchiectasis involving the segmental bronchi anterior and posterior of the right upper lobe, and on the left, we have a subsegmental bronchi dilated in the upper, upper apical segment of the upper part of the left upper lobe. This technique, minimum intensity projection and swivel, is also very well appreciated in case of focal bronchiectasis that helps the radiologist to look for and to detect any obstruction on the airways. This obstruction could be responsible for this, post for this bronchiectasis. We see an example of post-EB stenosis with post-obstructive bronchiectasis in the anterior segment of the right upper lobe. And we see an example of this uh, very distal post-obstructive bronchiectasis Related to the presence of a small bronchiolitiasis. And here, last example, we have a typical short circumferential post infectious stenosis at the origin of the right and terminate bronchus, responsible to bilobal atelectasis with post obstructive bronchiectasis. Now, beyond the large airways, the radiologist has to look for the lung parenchyma because many patients having bronchiectasis have also small airway disease. And the detection of small airway disease by the radiologist consists to detect areas of hypoattenuation. And these areas of hypoattenuation contain few vessels having small dimensions compared to the normal areas. And the combination of these hyperattenuated areas and hypoattenuated areas is called mosaic attenuation. And because there is an hypoperfusion responsible for hypoattenuation is called mosaic perfusion. This hypoperfusion is related to reflex vasoconstriction in areas where there is hypoventilation due to an obstruction on small airways. And we know now from the literature that in most cases of bronchiectasis, mosaic attenuation on inspiratory scans correspond to gas trapping on expiratory CT scans. Mosaic attenuation corresponds to areas of bronchiolitis distal to the dilated airways, and these uh, radiopathologic correlations have showed this obstruction could be inflammatory, but most often obliterative as well. And MINIPS improve the ability to detect bronchiectasis, mosaic attenuation, and associate obliterative bronchiolitis. Let me show an example here with a patient with bilateral bronchiectasis having mosaic attenuation pattern. If you do from the same data, coronal and sagittal reformats thickened and applying minimum intensity projection, we have a beautiful display on a few slices, the distribution of bronchiectasis and also the areas of gas trapping related to obstruction of the small airways. And sometimes when you have a difficulty in detecting this heterogeneity in lung attenuation, I recommend you to proceed on the same data on inspiratory scan to reconstruct the thick slabs and to use minimum intensity projection. In this case, we do that on expiratory scan, and we see beautifully in a few images the distribution extent of gas trapping due to small airways disease. You know, again, also, patients with bronchiectasis may also present with some foci or small centrilobular opacities. These small centrilobular opacities are relatively nonspecific, but if we thicken the slice, we thicken the slab, and you apply maximum intensity projection, you increase the profusion of this small nodular opacity, you increase the detection of linear branching opacity connected with small nodules, this is this is a typical of Trinbad sign reflecting the foci of infectious or inflammatory bronchiolitis associated with bronchiectasis. And we increase also the detection of mucus impaction, mucus plugging in the later bronchi. So systematically, when we have your coronal views like this, thicken the slab and apply maximum intensity projection, and you increase your detection ability, detection ability in displaying the images of this various foci of infectious bronchiolitis. So at the end of the interpretation, the radiologist has to incorporate in his report all information permitting to assess the extent and severity of both bronchiectasis and small airway disease. Number of segments of lobes bronchiectatic, 
which generation of bronchial division are involved, the degree of bronchial wound thickening, the extent of mucus plugging, the number of bullae, the extent of decrease in attenuation, the extent of synthonoblar nodules. And all this information will allow you to use global score. For patients with cystic fibrosis, different scoring systems have been developed. The two most commonly used uh, systems are the modified BALA scoring system and the modified BRALI scoring system. Both score the extent and severity of lung disease on CT with a similar accuracy and allow an objective and quantitative assessment of lung disease. But for patients with non-cystic fibrosis uh, bronchiectasis, there is the, the, the no, excuse me, uh, there is the bronchiectasis severity index already presented by my predecessor at the podium. This uh, bronchiectasis severity index includes the different clinical, functional, and bacteriologic parameters, or only one for radiology. Three or more lobes with bronchiectasis on HRCT. But the, the, the take home message from this index is the extent of bronchiectasis is associated with increased mobility and mortality according to the results of the study by Chalmers and the others. But beyond, the radiologist reporting his uh, examination has to keep aware that in addition, bronchial wall thickening an extent of hypoattenuated lung areas are both the most powerful markers of functional airflow limitation. And also bronchial thickening on initial CT examination is correlated with the overtime lung function deterioration. That means that bronchial thickening is the most determinant feature of worse prognosis. Some patients have no bronchiectasis, but they have small airway disease, particularly obliterative bronchiolitis. In such cases, when we have a doubt on the presence of heterogeneity in lung attenuation, you have to consider the possibility of mosaic attenuation due to mosaic perfusion. In this particular case, you have to proceed to complementary acquisition at expiration. And in this case, we have the, the accentuation of the contrast between normal and abnormal areas, the areas where there is obstruction of the small airway do not increase in attenuation as, uh, as normally expected. And uh, sometimes it's extremely difficult to perceive this heterogeneity in attenuation. And if you have any doubt or if there is a clinical information, particularly in obstructive lung, uh, disease at functional test, you have to proceed automatically to expiratory CT. And uh, using thick slabs with minimum intensity projection, we don't need a lot of dose. So this uh, only low dose is sufficient because we have the increase in signal nose ratio using the thickness larger on these images, and we have a beautiful display of the distribution and extent of gas trapping. Another example here, 15 mass, we have the coronal uh, and sagittal slab. In a few images, we are able to evaluate a global visual score of the distribution and extent of small airway disease. Sometimes obliterative bronchiolitis is diffuse, and in this case, they <laughs> is sometimes difficult to perceive. There is a black lung with a few vessels in the lungs. We have bronchial thickening. If you have to consider that as abnormal, they ask for additional expiratory CT, and there is no significant change at expiration because there is no increase in attenuation as normally expected, and the patient has really expired according to the decrease in the size of the bronchi. But what about now, patient with COPD? Beyond the assessment of presence and extent of emphysema, the radiologist has to look at the airways. The airway changes in patients with COPD include bronchial thickening, bronchiectasis, mostly tubular and mostly in the lower lobes, tracheal and central bronchial abnormalities, and small airway disease. And small airway disease may be either inflammatory or obstructive. Uh, for example here, the patient with COPD presenting a typical airway disease predominant phenotype. There is little 
of emphysema in the upper lobes. There is a very striking thickening of the walls of the airways and lower lobes, particularly, with slight dilatation of the lumen of the airways. It a decreased lung attenuation in the lower lobes with sad emphysema. Keep in mind that in COPD, bronchial thickening is an important independent predictor of uh, FOV1 and risk of acute exacerbation. But if you use minimum sensitive projection and swivel, if you are uh, excited by, to look at the abnormality of the proximal airway in this patient, we see irregularity in the lumens, irregularity in the walls of this bronchi, particularly in those patients having a typical chronic bronchitis. As if you do virtual endoscopy, we see this thickening of the bronchial spur, the irregularity of the inner surface of the airways. And we see here the typical accord accordion-like uh, that previously described by the bronchographic, uh, classical bronchography, typical of chronic bronchitis. In addition, if you use minimum intensity projection, we detect also easily this bronchial diverticula, these air collections visible in the walls of the proximal bronchi, main stem bronchi, lobar bronchi, SM segmental bronchi, like an example typical here. This air collection represents the fusion of multiple depression and dilatation of bronchial glands ducts. An increased number of bronchial diverticula is associated with history of cigarette smoking and with symptoms of cough. Abnormality of the trachea, the subversive trachea, is deformity uh, characterized by the narrowing of the trachea and the coronal plane involving only the intrathoracic trachea and sparing the cervical part is associated with more advanced stages of disease. On the opposite, tracheomacromalacia is observed in 20% of COPD patients is not correlated with airflow limitation. Tracheomacromalacia is characterized by an exaggerated collapse of the lumen of the trachea at forced expiration uh, with the anterior bowel displacement of the posterior wall of the trachea. And the, 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 the best technique to assess trachomochromalacia is a dynamic expiratory MDCT. You ask the patient to inspire and then to expire. <sighs> During the, uh, the last part of the expiration, uh, forced expiration, you scan the patient. And the criterion for the diagnosis is the reduction of the trachea lumen area more than 80% as compared to inspiratory scan. And the small airway disease in COPD, yes, the, on the absence of emphysema, if you have decreased lung attenuation, if you have gas trapping at expiration without any change in attenuation, without anterior posterior gradient of attenuation as normally expected, this is gas trapping. But the best technique to assess the extent of gas trapping in COPD patients is to use quantitative imaging analysis using lung densitometry. Lung densitometry is a thresholding technique. You use different threshold. The best threshold is minus 856 or minus 850 on end expiratory scans. Another metric is the expiration to inspiration ratio of mean lung density but in COPD patients, we have also emphysema. And uh, if, if emphysema is also responsible for low attenuation in expiratory scan. So the best to eliminate emphysema from the volume of interest to calculate the extent of non emphysema to lung with gas trapping is to use double thresholdings. Double thresholdings with minus 950 and minus 856. But new techniques using the formal resistance techniques of the inspiration and expiration images permit to calculate the voxel by voxel ventilation map based on the change in CT attenuation between inspiration and expiration. We see here an example, the inspiratory image, expiration image that are fused using this deformable registration technique. And we have the fused image here. And according to different double threshold use, we can select the voxels of normal lung in green, the voxels of emphysema in red, and the voxels of non-emphysematous lung presenting small airway disease responsible for gas trapping. Regarding bronchial wall thickening, of course, this um, visual sign 
suffering from inter server viability. That's why several investigators have developed software platform soft, software platforms permitting a morphometric analysis of their ways. You have automatic segmentation of the lumen of the airways. We have a calculation of the lumen of the airways. We are we segment automatically the central line of the airways. On this central line, you can select any bronchus, you obtain the, the cross-section reformatted, and uh, we have algorithms permitting to segment the inner and the outer contours of the airways, permitting to calculate the wall area, lumen wall area, and the wall area percent on any bronchus, if you like. Different metrics have been used, but the summing metrics is the square root of wall area of a hypothetical bronchus with a 10 millimeter luminal perimeter calculated from linear regression of all measured bronchi. Well, now what about asthma? Asthma is also an inflammatory uh, disease involving the airways. It's a heterogeneous condition and 5 to 10% of asthmatic patients present a severe disease related to change in the airway structures. This is called airway remodeling. You see, airway remodeling involves both bronchi and the small airways. So that makes sense to look at the presence or absence of gas trapping in these patients, and if yes, to evaluate the extent of gas trapping. Actually, uh, gas trapping correlates with airflow limitation, asthma severity, airway hyperresponsiveness, and disease duration. It has been demonstrated that subjects with gas trapping are significantly more likely to have history of asthma, related hospitalization, ICU visit, and mechanical ventilation. The quantitative assessment of gas trapping is lung densitometry on the expiratory scan. And what about the airway remodeling of the airways? We can also visualize the thickening of the walls of the airways. We can also use quantitative imaging, airway wall thickness that correlates with pathologic measures of remodeling. CT assess the airway remodeling correlates with asthma severity. And some of these years recently have used quantitative imaging in several asthmatics and show that the morphology changes in airways are lumen narrowing wall thickening and focal bronchial stenosis. And uh, the Oguma showed that wall thickening is significantly greater and luminal area smaller in patients with asthma and so in COPD. So, in summary, volumetric thin section MDCT acquisition with multiple now reformations, MIP and MINIP, is recommended for the assessment of bronchial disease and associated small airway disease. Complementary load of the expiratory CT is recommended in case of doubt in the on the presence of mosaic attenuation and dynamic expiratory CT for trichomacromalacia. And in patients of COPD persistent asthma, quantitative imaging may be used to assess more accurately airway remodeling to obtain a better phenotype of these patients and to get better targeted treatment. Thank you very much for.